Dear friends, rest is important. Over the past several months, many of us have changed our patterns of life for various reasons. Now, I hope and pray they are all positive changes, but changes are stressful. Always. Changes create strains on us, regardless of whether the change is positive or negative. Stress comes from the death of a loved one or the birth of a child, from losing a job or beginning a new position, from a desired move or the loss of a home, from exercising more or exercising less than usual. Change is often so threatening to us because even good changes can be difficult for us. And yet change is inescapable. Both the changes we would prefer and the changes we wished we could avoid. What are we to do? Thanks be to God, we have received a commandment to honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Now, it's true. In the small catechism, Martin Luther connects this commandment to reverence for God's word and gladly hearing it by coming to hear preaching, by receiving the Lord's Supper, by learning the scriptures, and all that's true. But Sabbath is also rest, a time to pause and dwell, a time of respite, a time to be still in God's presence. And that commandment's given to all of us, including those of us who work on Sundays. Last Thursday, I attended a day of respite at the house next door, hosted by the Reverend Dale Sullivan, who you may remember. Now, I cannot possibly cover everything helpful that I encountered that day, but I did find one thing I want to pass on to you right now, a devotional method called Luther's Four-Stranded Garland. It's adapted from Joseph Drisk's book, Protestant Spirituality, which where Joseph got it and adapted it from Luther's A Simple Way to Pray. It's a booklet he wrote in 1535 for a barber. Now, the Reverend Dr. Wendy Abrahamson led a small group, including me, in using this method. And I'd like to offer it to you as a way of pausing and of respite and of Sabbath. If you're curious, Luther's actual words in the tract from which this method is taken are about meditation on the Ten Commandments. That's what he's specifically talking about. And he writes, I take one part after another and free myself as much as possible from distractions in order to pray. I divide each commandment into four parts, thereby fashioning a garland of four entwined strands. That is, I think of each commandment as first instruction, which is really what it is intended to be, and consider what the Lord God so earnestly demands of me. Second, I turn it into a thanksgiving. Third, a confession. And fourth, a prayer. I do so in thoughts or words. And then he gives examples. Now, that translation, by the way, is from Eric Lund in the annotated Luther, uh, which is part of a series, a six-volume series of Luther's writings. And that's Fortress Press 2016. So in my group, we didn't use the Ten Commandments, actually. We used a different method. Uh, we used the Psalms. Now, you could use any text, but I do think Luther's right. I think you either use the Psalms, the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, or the Apostles' Creed, at least to start until you're pretty familiar with the method. And here it is. First, you simply read the passage for its overall meaning. You just let what strikes you strike you. And then you read it again, listening for the word or phrase or thought that comes as instruction. Maybe it reminds you of something or it brings a new thought into your heart or mind. And when you're ready, you read again, listening for the same word of instruction. And you greet that word of instruction with deep gratitude. You let that gratitude sit with you. And when you're ready, read it again and give yourself permission to be gentle and loving with your confession, remembering and trusting that God loves you. And finally, when you're ready, read again slowly, 
listening for how the text is guiding or leading you. And then remain quietly with that guidance until you're ready to close your prayer with thanksgiving to God for the time you have been given. As I said, in practice, we used Psalm 46. So here is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The word that came to me is, God burns the shields with fire. It struck me at once that what I'd always heard as violence was, in fact, a far more practical use for wooden shields. They're firewood. God not only breaks the barriers we construct, but reveals that they are misuse of something God has given for the purpose of uniting us, to help us, to provide for our lives by giving us warmth and a way to cook our food. So here's the fourfold, the four strands, the garland. Instruction. God is about destroying our divisions and making what we have turned into barriers back into the gifts for our lives that they were meant to be. Gratitude. How deeply grateful I am that God takes what is malformed in me, my defensiveness, for example, and promises to make something life-giving out of it. Confession. The many shields and barriers that I raise needlessly because of my fear or my shame. Guidance. That God calls me to trust in God's presence and purpose from me beyond any power that can do me harm, beyond any failure of my own making. I hope that's helpful for you. But dear friends, however you take time to be with God, may the Holy Spirit convert the forces of death and separation in your life into the fuel of life and joy for you and for all the world. Thank you for being with me for this time, and I hope to talk to you again soon. Until then, God bless.